Hi. Now in this question, we've got to solve the inequality, the mod of x minus root 2 is greater than the mod of x plus 3 root 2. So if this is a question you'd like to try and you haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready, and as usual, I'll take you through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. Now, to do something like this, what I would want to do is, first of all, draw a graph of each of the mod functions. And so, if we set up a y-axis, okay, like so, and we'll have our x-axis, something like that, okay, then let's start by drawing the graph of y equals the mod of x minus root 2. Now, without the mod sign, this would be a linear function, a straight line graph, in other words. The gradient would be 1, because you've got the 1x there, and it would intercept the y-axis at minus root 2. So what we would have is a line coming down something like this, okay? But because we've got a mod sign around this, this line is going to come down like so, intersect the x-axis there at, in fact, root 2, because this would be where y would equal 0. Let's just pop that in there, root 2. But at that point, instead of carrying on down here, it's going to be reflected upwards, okay, like that, okay? So this point here would be the point where y is equal to root 2. That's when x is 0, okay, in here. Because you'll have the mod of negative root 2, which will be positive root 2. Okay, so that's that graph. Next, we need to draw the graph y equals the mod of x plus 3 root 2. And if we're doing this one, again, without the mod, this would be a linear function, and that would be a straight line, gradient the same as this gradient, so it's going to be parallel, and it would cut the y-axis at the point 3 root 2. So we would have a line coming down like so, like this, okay? And it would cross the y-axis at 3 root 2. So just going to draw it in here. It's not drawn to scale, but hopefully it will give you an idea. That would be our line crossing the y-axis at the point 3 root 2. So just mark that in there, 3 root 2. It would carry on down here, but at this point it is now going to be positive, okay, because of the mod. And so we get a reflection in the x-axis. So you get something like that. And it's not drawn particularly accurately, but uh, this line should be parallel to this one. So they're never going to intersect. This point here would be when y is 0, and that would be when x equals minus 3 root 2. So we'll just pop that in as minus 3 root 2. So as I say, you can see it's not drawn to scale, but hopefully it just gives you an idea of what's going on. Now, what I'm interested in is to find the critical value. When solving inequalities, find the critical value. That's when this would equal this. And it would equal, okay, one another at this point here. I'll call this point A. It's the only point where the two graphs cross. These lines, although they don't quite look it, should be parallel. So they're never going to cross. And as I said earlier, these lines will never cross. They're parallel. So this is the point we're looking for, the value of x at this point here. And let's just project that x value down onto the x-axis. So when it comes to solving the inequality, once we've got this value here, all we're looking for is where this graph is greater than this graph. And that occurs for the y values, okay, that are in this section back here. You can see that the red graph, okay, is 
greater, it's higher, if you like, than the green graph over this section, okay, of x values. From here, okay, back in that direction. That's what we're looking for, okay, those x values that are less than this particular x value. Okay, so all we need to do is find out what this x value at A is. And there's two ways that we can do this, and I'll show you both ways. The way that I would prefer is this one, where let's just put an intro here for A, and I'm going to look at where this line, okay, crosses this line. And the equation of this line here is going to be the negative part of this value. So it's going to be minus x plus root 2. So we're looking at minus x plus root 2. And where does that equal? Okay, this part of the graph. And this part of the graph is the positive part, okay, of this modulus 1. This is going to be x plus 3 root 2. Whereas this graph, part of the graph, is minus x minus 3 root 2. So we're looking for this one. So it's going to be x plus 3 root 2. Now all we've got to do is just solve this equation for x. So if I subtract x from both sides, I've got minus x minus another x. We're therefore going to have minus 2x. And if I subtract root 2 from both sides, we've got 3 root 2 minus another root 2, which is going to be 2 root 2. So if I divide by minus 2 to both sides, I end up with x equaling minus root 2. So this point here, this x value here, is going to be minus root 2. So in conclusion then, if I just wind this up, I just say therefore if the mod of x minus root 2 is to be greater than the mod of x plus 3 root 2, then what we've got, it follows that x must be less than minus root 2. All right? Okay, so that's the way I would do this. Now I did say that there was another way that we could do this inequality. It's not a way that you can always apply, but you can certainly do it in this particular question because what we've got is two terms. Each term has a mod sign around it, so they're both going to be positive. And when this happens, what we can do is square both sides and keep the inequality sign in. So what we can do is square both sides. This is our alternative method. We'll just put or here. Squaring both sides, we've got x minus root 2 all squared is greater than x plus 3 root 2 all squared. Now, if we square out our brackets in the usual way, we'll have the first term squared. So it's going to be x squared. We get twice the product of the terms, so the product of terms is minus root 2x. If we double that, we get minus 2 root 2x. And then square the last term, which is going to be plus 2. And this is going to be greater than, and again, if we square this bracket out, that'll be x squared. And then the product of the terms is 3 root 2x. We double that, and we get plus 6 root 2x. And then we square the last term, so that's going to be 3 squared, which is 9, and root 2 squared, which is 2. 9 twos are 18, so you get plus 18. Now, if I were to say I can subtract x squared from both sides, that just goes to 0. And I could, for instance, take 6 root 2x from both sides. So I'd have minus 2 root 2x minus 6 root 2x is going to be minus 8 root 2x. And if I subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to have 18 minus 2, which is going to be 16. And we'll have greater than in between. So we've got minus 8 root 2x is greater than 16. 
I've got to be careful here because if I now divide both sides by a negative value, I've got to reverse the inequality, okay? A rule that uh, hopefully you remember. So we've got x now is less than 16 over minus 8 root 2. And I want to clean this up. I can see that the 8 goes into the 16 twice. And I want to rationalize this, so I need to multiply essentially by 1. We times top and bottom by root 2 in this example, okay? So by doing that, I end up with therefore x is less than 2 root 2, okay, over, and then on the bottom here, we've got minus root 2 times root 2, which is minus 2. And again, I can cancel this down, and I find that those 2s will cancel. Okay, we'll just take those out. That goes once, that goes once there. So we end up with root 2 over minus 1. So we've got x is less than minus root 2. So an alternative way of solving this mod inequality. Leave it up to you to decide which one you prefer. Okay?